like Easter holidays, we're on the verge of it all now. Yeah, and the days are getting longer. This is my favorite time of year. I'd like to start by reading a passage um, very relevant to this day. It's in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Would you put that on the screen for me? And uh, my microphone's feedbacking a lot. Might have to turn it down a little bit. All right, here we go. Verse 28, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. And he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. He sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you'll see a donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? The disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. Will you say that with me? The Lord needs it. Okay. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the Lord. Just imagine them shouting and singing this. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. <laughs> it's awesome. So I want to talk today about King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus. We're getting ready to celebrate Easter. All over the world, people are getting ready for this special day, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, and it's happening next Sunday, by the way. We're going to have two services here celebrating that day. It's going to be a party. If any any day of the year is a day for Christians to party, it's Sunday coming. All right? It's Easter. It's a party, party day. And uh, But this is is a Sunday before Easter, (laughs) obviously. And we often call this Palm Sunday. And we get that, in fact, we were going to have little palm branches all tied up into those green balloons, but probably it would have popped all the balloons, so we didn't do that anyway. But it's Palm Sunday, and um, Palm Sunday is, comes from this passage along with Matthew, Mark, and um, John's passage. And it, Luke doesn't share this, but they, it, in this procession of Jesus on his way into Jerusalem, it, it talks about how the people were waving these palm branches and then laying it down um, underneath the feet of this colt. And why would they do this? Why would they wave these branches? Well, this is what you do when a king comes back victoriously from war and your whole nation is having a party you wave palm branches in celebration. And so Jesus is just wanting everybody to know that he's not just Jesus. He's King Jesus. Do you know him? Jesus is a king. And uh, if you want to really know Jesus, you got to know he's a king. Okay? Today in Ireland, we're probably going to find out who our next chieftain is. They're going to let us know who the Taoiseach is, I think, unless they already have. Have they let us know yet? We don't know. You have to don't check your phones now, but I'm sure RTE will let us know soon. Leadership. It's an interesting day for them to choose their leader. 
I think the timing is interesting. Um, one of the big questions, if you look at the story of Jesus in the New Testament, the thing that they were always asking about Jesus is, who is he? Who is this man? And so pe different people came to different conclusions of who he was. Teacher, good teacher, amazing teacher. Uh, healer, miracle worker, prophet, carpenter, son of Joseph and Mary, village boy, friend of sinners. So I think um, you'll you probably see this on social media. Most people are happy with Jesus if they can box him into the title that they feel comfortable with. But if you really want to understand who he is, you have to take him as he is. Who did he say he was? And um, yeah, I just I see that over and over, especially at this time. Um, because Jesus is not just meant to be a Jesus of your imagination. Jesus is Jesus. And Jesus is a king. <laughs> so we want to look at this. Um, you know, we were singing Yeshua. I don't know if any of you know what Yeshua, probably all, most of you know Yeshua. That's the Hebrew pronunciation for Jesus. And that song goes on, um, says Yeshua Amashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And, or you could say Jesus Christ. Jesus actually means savior. Um, and do you know what a Messiah was? A king, an anointed king. Jesus is king. Do you know him? Is he your king? That's a different story now. Now we're getting personal, Noel. We have to come to terms with the authority of Jesus. And if you're Irish or American, you do not like that. Probably if you're from anywhere, authority. Right? I'm kind of uncomfortable with authorities, right? You know, I got that bumper sticker that says question authority. So let's Consider that. Maybe you're like me. I don't know if you're like me. But Jesus says he is the king. And, and this is what they say. The people say in, the, in those verses, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the one that all of scripture talked about, this king Jesus. And all the prophets were telling of the day when this king was going to come and put everything right. This is what Isaiah the prophet said. He said, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. He's talking about this Messiah. He's talking about this day when the king is going to come. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. So all of the prophets were talking about a day when a king would come. And it was a day for rejoicing because this king was going to put everything right. Not just for Jewish people but for the whole world, for all of eternity, he was going to make things as they should be. This is our king. And so he's the, the human hope. But, um, but I've got to be honest with you. Generally, I don't really care that much about kings. Right? We can, I mean, king royalty, like... Um, they're kind of, maybe today, they're kind of like celebrities. We might like, like reading about them in the you know, ads. And I know 
a princess is going through a challenging situation now, so we read about what she's going through, how she's responding. They're kind of like celebrities, and they're, and they're interesting, but we live in a different culture today, right? And, um, you know, Ireland had a lot of kings. Um, I think they probably didn't have one because the Irish don't like to have one king. I don't know. You're going to have to. I'm, I'm being embarrassed, embarrassing myself now. But we can talk about Americans. Um, I, I always laughed. I had a friend from Wales, and we would talk about history. He was, he was my dorm mate in college. And uh, we, would, we would talk, I would talk about the Revolutionary War when America gained its independence. And I laughed so hard because he told me what they called that war in his country. They called it the Great Rebellion. <laughs> I was like, well, hold on a second. This is the revolution. No, he's like, no, that's the Great Rebellion. And um, so we struggle with authorities, don't we? I mean, do you like authorities? Do you like people telling you what to do? Maybe you're Irish. <laughs> so, um, where am I? I've just totally lost now. Okay. So, there are these authorities, and um, we, we, we don't like authorities usually, but the truth is, is that um, humans, as humans, were made to live a certain way. We're made, um, the way we're made is that we will always have something that we honor and serve. And if we don't have a, a king or a queen, we will create a king or a queen out of someone or something. And I think you see it in young people that they're be on the lookout for an influencer. Who's an influencer that I can shape my life after? And I listen to every word they say because they're going to give me what I need and want and make me who I'm meant to be. And not just teenagers, by the way, but a lot of us. We, we look for something that we can honor and serve, and we put a crown on those things. Oh, so, so what's your king? Or who's your king? What do you shape your life after? What do you honor? You may not have a king. You may not think you like authorities. But you will always honor and serve someone or something. And another way to talk about honor and serve is to worship, to bow to. Maybe, you know, you, you see people. Some people will serve their career. They will work so hard they make themselves sick. They will work so hard that they neglect every other relationship in their life. Why? Because they're honoring and serving their king. Some people will honor and serve their bank account or their retirement or um, honor and serve my independence even or honor and serve my comfort. Maybe those things are your king. Have you ever thought about that? What's your king? Jesus is a king. Uh, so we, that's a good question, I think. What do you honor and serve? We all have to live for something. And so what's your number one thing? Uh, because um, whatever you crown will control you. Do you have a good king? You've got to serve somebody. Humans were just made to do that. We're made to serve and honor something or someone. And that's just how we were made. And it, the, the scriptures talk about this. At the very beginning, humanity stood before their creator, who was totally worthy the ultimate authority, perfect in holiness, high and lifted up, glorious. And then because of their rebellion, there was like this brokenness that came into the world. And 
we were no longer able to live the best life that we were meant to because of this broken relationship with this authority that was there. So, um, who's your king? The, in Genesis, it also goes and talks about how one day, this is really the, the first prophecy about a, a king who would fix everything, and it talks about how he would go to, to war, essentially, against this great serpent, and he was going to be terribly wounded, but he was going to be victorious through it all. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And so every one of us is looking for a king. And sometimes we don't even realize it. What I love about Jesus is that he is, a, um, he is the king. The king. So the prophets were not just talking about there's going to be a king someday. This is the king of kings. The king. And he's so different. But we don't like kings very much, do we? Let's just get honest with ourselves today. Is that okay? Um, usually, you know, we like to, what we like, what the king that we like, I like to be king. And you like to be your own king, don't you? Be honest with yourself. You like to be your own king. Yet Jesus says that he is king. He's very clear. It's very, very challenging, Jesus. Will you take him as he is? Or do you want to make him into your imagination of who he is? He says he's a king. But he's a good king, my brothers and sisters. He's actually better than me. I know you can believe that, but can you believe that he's better than you? He's a king. We want to be in control, though, don't we? We like to think we're in control. You're not. I'm not. Just live a little, and you'll figure it out. You are not as in control as you think you are. You're not as in control as you would like to be. But there's a good king who is in control. But will you take him as your king? So I got this carving. Can you see that? This is my little colt, my little young donkey. And I got this at the bottom of Ma the Mount of Olives, right near where this story took place. A friend of mine brought me to Israel, and um, we were walking in the Kidron Valley up towards the Garden of Gethsemane, and there was this old car with a blanket on top surrounded by Arab men that lived in East Jerusalem. And on the top of the car were all these little carved wood uh, animals and different trinkets. And I saw this, and I was like, it's perfect. This so reminds me of the king. Now, what kind of king <laughs> rides on a little baby donkey? What kind of king is this? Such a pansy. Do you ever use that word, or is that, is that from my American? That's my Americanism. Pansy king. Jesus says, go get that colt. Guys, lads, go get the colt. So they go get the colt, and it's a colt that is, a colt is just the young donkey, and it's very young, so young, nobody has ever ridden it. It's unbroken. Really interesting. And what he's doing is he's, he's fulfilling a prophecy. He's, he's helping his disciples because he knew who he was and he wants to fulfill the prophecies about him. And this is the prophecy that he's fulfilling. It's in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And this is what it says. Another prophet says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. That's the kind of king. A righteous, victorious king. But then it says, humble. 
riding on the donkey. That's a pansy king. Riding on not just a donkey, a donkey's colt, a little tiny colt. What are you doing? You know, like I think the disciples, when Jesus said, you know, I'm going to enter into Jerusalem on this uh, because I'm the king, right? And I think the disciples were like pumped. Yeah, Jesus. And then he says, go get the colt. And they're like, no, what are you thinking? This is not a good idea, Jesus. We need to get you like a huge, massive white horse. And all Peter's like, you can use my sword and you need to enter in in power like a real man. Come on, Jesus. But he rides in on this little baby donkey. So Jesus, this is such a different kind of power. Power and weakness. This is such a different kind of king. Trustworthy. Not by force. But in weakness. That's the kind of king you should pay attention to. It's a better king than you. It's a better king than me. It's a better, there's no better king than this king. So he doesn't just come to bring justice, but, you know, he comes to bear justice on himself. Take what you deserve on himself. This is that kind of a king. And, um, and all this week, I, I, well, I, I was listening to a song this week, and it said something like, um, he took your cross. And um, I, I, like, I couldn't get away from it. Like, my cross? And I know I knew it, but this week I like, kind of felt it. Yeah, actually, I was the one that was supposed to get the punishment. I was the bad one. And he took it for me. That's this Jesus. And um, there's this... There's a minister, and he wrote something I, I thought was really great. I changed some of the words, but he says something like this. This is the king who knows no sin, yet bears the sin of the whole world. Nazi sin, rapist sin, American sin, Irish sin, African sin, Asian sin, the sins of children, white-collar sin, blue-collar sin, transgender sin, red-light district sin, stained-glass sin, domesticated sin, Christian sin, endless evil, your sin, my sin. This is that kind of king, such a weird king, entering in to take punishment. Just a powerful king. Do you know him? Do you know this king? If you don't, you've never met anybody like him. You got a king. This king's better if you don't have this king. He's a good king. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't destroy you. A lot of other kings will destroy you. So this is the king. He is the king, and he is gentle and lowly king. And so I suppose the question is, is, um, is about obedience to the king. You obey the king. So the disciples, you know, they obeyed King Jesus. They went and got the colt, and they brought it to him. And um, I, think it's, I think it's so interesting, like, we actually were meant to obey the king. Actually, for us to live our full life, our best, you know, we talk about my best life. I'm going to live my best life. But, you know, the only way to live your best life is to live under the true king. And that's not you. And you, I know you know it's not me, but I have to convince myself that it's not me. You've got to live your life under the true king to gain your best life. So, actually, the, the little donkey's colt did this super well. Do you know? Because this donkey was an unbroken donkey, 
And um, nobody had ever ridden on it. Do you know what animals do that you know, ride, people ride on them? Do you know what they do when they're first ridden on? They try to buck that thing right off of. <laughs> you ever seen those rodeos? And you get, you try, go try and sit on a sheep and you'll see what happens. You'll get a little <laughs> picture of what goes on. But it was so interesting. They threw the jackets on this donkey and this, this little colt just submitted, living under its king. That's such a beautiful picture of the way things are meant to be. Any animal lovers here? The Bible's got a beautiful animal lover um, scripture here in Isaiah, another prophetic word. It says, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. It was as things are meant to be. All of creation knows it. There is a king. Every human is looking for a king to worship. This is the king. King Jesus. He's a savior. And he's a king. Do you know him? Do you know him? So his followers and the crowd spread out the red carpet. They laid their garments on the colt, and he sat on it, and then they began to lay out their clothes. Imagine, imagine. Yeah, Jesus, woo -hoo! Go. And everybody's just throwing their jackets, even though they're cold here, and, and they're excited. And imagine the king. And... Um, when we talk about king, I know we don't like kings. We want to be king. And if there is a king, it feels like, oh, I got to do it. And I'm talking about a king, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I, I do not fulfill that. I'm not treating him as king. I don't know if you feel like that, because um, I need to do my duty. Right? He's a king, so I have to. I need to. Ugh. You ever be like that? Oh, God, he's God. I better do it. Ugh. This is not what's happening here. They are, like, so happy. This is a, this is, like, this is not just duty. This is desire. That's what he wants for us. He's not, you know, it's such a balance, this duty and this desire, because we're meant to have both, because he's a king. But if you knew him, it would not feel like a duty. It would, you'd be like so excited, let me throw my jacket down, let me throw my life down before you, I belong to you, you're my king. And they shout and they sing, and they're so like enthralled by the beauty of this master. And they can call him Lord. Oh, you're the Lord. You can have my whole life. If you could see who he is, it would just explode out of you. What you know you're supposed to give wouldn't be a burden anymore. It would be a joy. Can you imagine? Paul talks about it in Romans 12. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is your reasonable act of worship. Like, if you could just see how much he is for you, how much he wants to bless you, how good he is, how short this life is, how poor a king you are, even though you think you're so good. If you could just really see, you'd be throwing your garments down in front of that colt. 
you'd be ready to obey at the drop of a hat. And so pray and ask the Lord to help you to see, to burn a desire in you, change, to stop trying to be the king. Instead, worship the king. Jesus is the king. Jesus is the king. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. He's not just a king. He's a good king. He's the best king. He's a beautiful king. He's a mighty king. He's a king that loves you. He's a king that knows you. He's the king that made you. Your best life is to come under his kingship. Stop trying to be the king. You're not that good. I'm not that good. So his followers shout and sing, and they praise the king. I was actually wondering if we could do that last song together. Would that be all right, in worship team? Would you guys come up? I think we should do this last song that you guys did. That was so awesome. So they, sh they shout and sing. All his followers were praising the king. But do you know, listen, followers of the king, there's always going to be people that say, shut up. You might be worshiping your king, and they're going to be like, stop it. They might be comfortable with Jesus as a good teacher. Jesus as a friend of sinners. But once you bring it to, he's my king, he should be your king. He is your king. Then they'll be like, shut up. But he's a king. This is what the Pharisees, they said, Jesus, tell your followers to shut up. And Jesus says, if they shut up, the rocks are going to be cheering. Because all of creation knows that I am the king. So let them shout. Let them sing. Let them lay their garments at the feet of this animal that carries me. This is who I am.